I think, I think so, but check the website, I mean, that's the best place. I, I, I have to have a conversation with the producers who organized all this and figured it all out with the building. So that was, I was just having a quick conversation, wanted to run by you guys, you know, uh, just to give a couple of weeks for our visit when they were out of town. Washington work in the lobby of the public theater at Silver Parks, and we are going to, for the next hour or so, we're going to make a play together. Uh, it's also, or mostly really, a working class. Most people here are writers, and so it's a, basically a free writing class in the lobby of the public theater. I like to say it's, to say it's just like Shakespeare in the Park, but it's not Shakespeare and it's not in the park. <laughs> But this free, and we're here for you. We're here to cheer you on and get you going, or restarted, or helping you to continue to work. And we do that by this. We um, first we work together for 20 minutes. We create the action of the play, yeah, if you will. We work together for 20 minutes, and then we create the dialogue of the play together, in which you ask me questions about your creative process, your writing process, or your stuff. Uh, any questions about the business aspect of writing, anything, 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 okay? And we will find an answer or pretend like you know what we're talking about. So, uh, if you would like to, you, you guys here in the lobby of the public theater, you can just ask me and I'll repeat the question. Right, Brian? <laughs> repeat the question, right? We'd all appreciate it. Right, and, um, and those of you out in the interwebs, Caroline will tell you how to get in touch with us. You can tweet us your questions on Twitter to the handle at WatchMeWork, SLP, with the hashtag HowlRound and hashtag NewPlay. Yes. Y'all know how to do this. I, okay, so we're going to work for 20 minutes. And this is just a prop. It used to work. It used to be a working prop, but now it's just a decorative thing. All right. All right.
producer's Trent while I was supposed to be working. I stopped to email him on my phone. Because maybe we'll go up to Memorial Day and then take a hiatus for a couple weeks after Memorial Day. Okay. Maybe that's where we'll Think about that. We'll take a poll. If somebody's like, you know, a lot of people won't be here in the next couple of weeks, I'll think of it now. Anyway, questions about your work, your creative process? Hi, Crystal. How's it going? Good. I'm just going to say hi. You don't have to. No, I have lots of Oh, you do? You do? Yeah, always. Hi. No. Hi. I guess, I, oh, I've been tweeting, if you didn't know. Oh, that, that was you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was, so. you should have said, girl, you know who I am. I didn't, well, I didn't I was know. I was like, Crystal is <laughs> tweeting us. It's you. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. I, I finally figured it out. I had a perfect. Oh, perfect. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I understand. Or should be. Um, Wow. So, okay. I, so now your questions are making a different kind of sense. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, and so your answers are kind of making a different kind of sense. Right, because I didn't know who I was, I was just like, yeah. Talking. But yeah. it makes sense, because I think it, it, it was spoken in a, almost a general sense. Right, and right, so it, right. And so I picked up some stuff from it. Okay, oh, good, good, good. So just going through the process, and I don't know how much more, but um, we talked about, um, when I was last here, you said to simplify and tell the story to myself. 
So right, because you were you were writing one draft in a in a light light way and one draft in a heavy way. Yeah. And you were thinking of combining them, right. maybe integrating them. And right. So and we talked about tell the story to yourself. I'm just repeating what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. um, and then um, and then I realized, oh my gosh, that's what my daughter does in school. She she writes, but she we yeah. simplify. And kind of say, okay, this is what happened, this is what happened, this is what happened. She has to do her stuff for school. And I'm like, maybe I should just go to third grade. <coughs> I started like, right, this sense. is, oh, then you figured it out. Yes. This is actually third grade all over again. <laughs> right, right. Well, you realize, right, that's yeah. what they do, that's what we do when we learn how to tell stories. Right. This is what happened, this is what happened, and you're just saying your daughter does that. Right. right. Yeah. But it turned out that doing that, I wasn't clear about my one of the parts. Uh -huh. So I kind of had to step, uh, take a few steps back. That's why we asked you to simplify. Yeah. And a lot of times we are we are having difficulty because there's a part that's not clear. Right. So when you simplify, you say this is what happened, then this, then this, then this, you kind of get basic. You realize, oh, I don't even understand what goes on there. Yeah. <coughs> Very good. So, um, good. so which brought me back to those issues with the questions that I was asking right. based on dialogue and character. And then I realized that, you know, from the very beginning when I first started coming here um, to now, my, both of the characters have, have changed, they've evolved in height because, you know, it's been a long time. But right. um, I learned, uh, we talked about, he said to let him speak. Right. And what I meant by the height and language is that yeah. he was very, um, it was like contemporary Shakespeare almost. And I didn't know if it was like on the notes. But then you also said that, I forgot, I forgot the fall in love aspect. You said the love is warm and love is, right. you know, nice. Yeah, and, like, and I forgot all place. about that part. And I'm like, that's a whole idea of this play. And so I kind of was able to... <laughs> roll my whole head. Go ahead. I'm not going to roll my eyes. I'm just going to roll my head. <laughs> I, I fell upon some discoveries about why he speaks the way he speaks. And, and I'm finding the warmth. Side and I, and I can now his words justify why he speaks the way he speaks. Right. right. So, right. Uh, thank you. That's really great because Crystal was tweeting in last week and she was talking, she was the one who said, I'm writing this love scene and the, how do I do that because the language feels elevated and I was like making fun of her. I didn't know it was her. <laughs> I was making fun of her going, girl, you know about love, like that. And now I'm like totally making fun of you. Yeah. But what she says now is that she, she was writing the love scene. Or the I want to get some scene, which isn't, you know, it's kind of the same thing, kind of, right? And she had forgotten that it was about love. And we do that a lot in our writing. We forget the specifics of what it is we're writing about. We have all these other things we're trying to do. And we forget, duh, it's about someone wanting to get with somebody else. That's the basic of the scene, right? So when we remember that, it's helpful, and then other things can, can, yeah. can come but, in. I mean, just, and within that part, I mean, he just, he kind of comes in. He, that's just the way he is. Right. Well, from the experience, from the time that she <coughs> right. first saw him when he didn't speak much to now, I said he was, he seemed very, um, like a spectator on life. You know, right. the yoga right. comment. Right. It was like, why is he always talking about life and like how love is, and why is he always talking about right. it? Right. You know, but it it was like there's something that happens from the rise to that okay. point when they meet again, where it seems like okay. that's just who he is now. Okay. Like how he speaks. Right. And also accepting her character for who they are. Yes. Yeah. Major. Yeah. A little woman. I forget her name. She's the way she had that suggestion. Just accepting for who he is. And then much attention. Yay! It's great for tweeting. <laughs> I know. Well, next time we'll, we'll guess it at you. Everybody remind me. Oh, it's not just Crystal, it's Crystal. Okay. So, anybody else? Yes, Jasper. Uh, what are. How. How ought I to approach a project? that's going to require quite a lot of research. Uh, yeah, like... How do you approach a project that's going to require a lot of research? Quite the, a lot. Yeah. Quite a lot, which is more than a lot. Yeah, which it's, it's one quite more than a lot, if it's we're using the metric system. 
Yeah. It's 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 one quite yeah. more than a lot. Wow. If we're That's using if we're using the English system. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're just going over my head, but uh, I would say it's a yeah it's a, yeah. F E S load. Yeah. <laughs> As we would say on the corner, right over there, it's an F E S load, right? Of research, of F E research. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um. And the tricky thing, Jasper, it's really a good question. How, how, how ought one approach having to do a ton of research for something that they're writing, something that you're writing? It's a good question because I often get lost in the research. It's been like 20 years researching, you know, and kind of, and, and start telling ourselves kind of what you're telling yourself now, which is probably true. I don't know enough about this to write about it. Fair enough. Okay, it might be true now. But that is a snowball kind of thing. And then we get trapped in front of the snowball. I don't know enough. I can keep running forever. You know, because I'll never know enough about this subject. Mm. So I would say, um, do you know, you don't have to tell us right now, but do you know the story that you want to tell that will come up this research? Yes. Yes. It's sort of... You don't have to tell us. I would suggest not telling us the specifics of the story. But you know, like, this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and then in the end, this kind of thing happened. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. So what you're going to research is the specifics and the details. Yeah. Flavor. Right. So, sort of things like, because it would be set in the 1930s. Right. And I don't know a whole lot about the 1930s. Right. I'd sort of, the sort of trouble is that I finished the previous thing that I was working on. Right. And that, like, which I mentioned last time, so yes. I'm shopping around for a new idea, right. basically. And this thing is exciting, and when I think about it, I get ideas for things that could happen. Right. Like, I thought, oh, maybe there could be a scene in which they go for a drive. Right. And then I sort of thought, well, could they afford to go for a drive in the 1930s? And then I thought, how much did gas cost in the 1930s? And then I thought, how much money would this character be making in the 1930s? And then I realized I have to do a ton of research. Okay, I would say, I would say that is not a ton. And I would say, be aware that you're already thinking that you don't know enough. See, you almost know everything about what you need to write about. You need to do some research, okay, because Finding out how much money he's going to make a week, <laughs> that's like five minutes on Google, right? Yeah. What's his job? What's, where, did he work, where did he work? Yeah, that's, that's less than five minutes. That's like three minutes, right? Okay. So you have like, let's be generous, a week's worth of research, which is not a ton. It's a week. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So since you already know the story, You've got to do about a week's worth of research about how much a car costs, how much gas costs. Maybe it's his friend's car, maybe it's his boss's car. Maybe his boss gives it to him in return for a good deed or a deed. So it costs him nothing except showing it to work on time. That was no research. <laughs> you know, right? It's like make it about the characters. You don't really need the specifics of 1930. You need to know more about the relationship between the characters. And that is going to give you the specifics, most of the specifics. What kind of car? That's a research moment, right? Yeah. Because you, you want to know what it looked like and what it you know? Yeah. So, so you see how I just did the, that. Yeah. You, when you get specific about the story, you find out that you need to know, you need a lot less research than you think you do. Because it's about the characters related to each other. It's always about that. And people who pepper their work with specific, you know, it's like name dropping at a cocktail party. Who cares, you know, you know what I'm saying? But we want to know the interactions between the characters. So, go and look up, where is, are, are they in America in the 1930s? Yeah. Okay, and, and where in America? Uh, I'm not sure, although I think, it's, I think it's New England. Great, so New England in the 1930s, so kind of pick the town, or pick the general area, Maine, or Boston, or whatever, 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 Vermont, or whatever, and Vermont in the 1930s. Okay, boom! That's like an hour of research. That's all you need. To get started, to write your first draft. Then you can find, oh my, I really need to know more about 
he was a carpenter and he made houses, you know, where he was needed fine joinery. How do I get to know more about joinery? You know, and then, then that's a whole, that's a, you see, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, a lot of times, we spend a lot of time doing research instead of, right, right, because we think, yeah, I, I'm not, I don't listen around in the 1930s, I better do research, because all those scholars from the 1930s are going to call me on the, you know, my stuff isn't real, you know, it's not specific. I did, uh, probably was one from the wars of set in the 1860s, and I, we did an event up at Harvard, Harvard, and I sat on stage, and it's, you know, set in the 1860s, and I sat on stage between Henry Louis Gates, Skip Gates, scholar, dun, 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 you see the horns sound before they say these guys, we say these guys' names. And on the other side was Eric Foner, famous historian. And there I was sitting between them, and it was a talk back. And so the audience wants to know all about the research that I'd done, and, and I was like, Ah, man, I didn't do much. I don't know. <laughs> and people laugh, like you guys are laughing now. And they both were like, oh, 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 oh. Well, it was pretty good, actually. Because it was about the people. Yeah. And not about the specifics of what kind of boots, that, how, how you, you know, put a sole on a boot in the, 19, in, you know, the 1860s. It wasn't about that. If it had been about that, I would have shown that research. It was. It's about relationships. So I did a fair amount of research, but not 20 years worth. Yeah. And they liked it, so. Is that cool? Yeah. Good question. Though. Very, very good question. Just remember it's about the people, about the people, about the people. Anybody else? Yes. I'm going to just repeat what you said, because you're softening. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I've, I've done a lot of writing, you know, about the 1920s. Okay. And um, I can't hear you. Carol's, Carol's done a lot of writing. I'm just going to be your, your yelling here. Carol's done a lot of writing about the 1920s. And uh, I found that uh, <laughs> when, when you're, while you're doing your other stuff, just have a paper handy just to write down any questions that come to you. That's a great idea. While you're doing, while you're writing. While, while you're moving ahead, and you can always do the research That's afterwards great when you know what the story is. That's a great yes, idea. Or well, if you can find I'm able to pause. While you're moving forward with your writing, right, keep a pad of paper handy and write down your questions that are specific to the 1920s or the 1930s or whatever. Yes, you, you can you, always go back and, yes. Yeah, and if you can find people who are alive then, Go to Google research. Anyway. That's that's the best. Go to Wikipedia. 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 Ask them questions. Wikipedia. <laughs> sure, sure. But that's a whole other. You see. Oh, I know someone who's alive in 1920. Great. I'm going to talk to them. Gosh, they're only available on Tuesday. We're talking about how to move forward. Yeah. Okay. If it works out, great. Right. But chances are that you're going to use that to not write. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'll make an appointment with dear aunt Sue Ellen, and she'll tell me all about Shirley. <laughs> yeah, but I can only see her in January, because you know, she's in Hawaii for the rest of the year. So I'll wait. You don't know how many times I've heard those things. What I did was go to nursing homes and retirement communities. And, sab and, and sabotage them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so you went and you, you hung out. You listen in? Yeah, I ask a question. You're allowed to do that? <coughs> they don't have lawyers yeah. there and contracts? And, and most of it was family. And oh, family. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. okay so that's a good... They, they love to talk. That's a good... Sure, sure, sure. You could. You could. You could. I would suggest doing your writing first. Yes, but that's a great idea. That's a great idea. So there are uh, people who are living that you can go and talk to, which is great. Um, but there's uh, writing, and while you're writing, Carol suggests keeping that pad of paper with questions, or running uh, a tab of questions. And you can find out, you can figure out later. Sure, that's great. Great, great, great. Yes? Uh, last week you were talking about, there was a gentleman, I don't remember, sitting over there about 
He had had so many drafts of his. Uh, Ryan, it was Ryan, right? Was Ryan? Right. It was the other, our, our Ryan, our second Ryan. Yes. Yes. And you said, um, if you start taking pieces from here and pieces from there, to, you know, to start over, you know, right. it would be in you. Right. And I had put my play aside for a while. Right. Uh, like you said, I realized that the story is. And then taking it out and kind of just reading it, the story was about. Uh, and so it's all changed, kind of changed on my head. And I remember. Well, just for a minute, because I was smart. If everybody here, so Liz was talking about, we were talking last week about Ryan with his different drafts and how to go to the next draft and how um, that it can be. Can we close it uh, I know, it's Ming Cho Lee's book party, the fabulous Ming Cho Lee's house. Fabulous book party. You say fabulous so many times. You say so many times. You can close the door. That would be great. <laughs> but so we're talking about getting that next draft and how, I mean, sometimes you could pick and pick and pick from this draft and that draft, but it, that could be overwhelming. Sometimes you could just start a new. So Lynn's saying she's, she's ready to, to do that and she knows the story isn't right yet. So, Kind of, and there was also the, the when you talked to Crystal, I remember thinking about that, about making it similar. What is the story? Right. And walking around right. asking yourself. So right. I come up with the story that seems to me a great one. Right. Um, but I guess my question is, then how do you, you just jump in again? Right. Right, right. But you, you, you do, right. So, so Lynn says, so she knew that she had to sort of find the story, and like we were talking about with Crystal, keep it simple. And so she's done that, and now what do you do? You just jump in again. Yeah. Um, in what form do you have the keep it simple version of your story? Um, in what form? What does it look like? It looks like this is the story of so-and-so. What does it look like on the page? Um, is it a paragraph? Is yeah, it a, a, a two-page two like, two like essay or whatever? Yeah. Like paragraphs like this? Like that. Great. Okay. Good. So we're gonna you're gonna jump in, and this is how you're gonna jump in. Like you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna stones across the river. Bullet points. Outline. Right? So, so for example, you're gonna, this is what happens, right? And then this happens, you see? Not a lot, not a big footprint there. Not a lot, not, just boom. This is what happens, and then this, and you're crossing the river. You're telling yourself your whole story. My mom's here, by the way. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, Bullet points, bullet points. I mean, we talk, or we talked about cars. If you, you know, we talked about index cards for Ryan because he needs to be grounded. Like that Anne Hathaway. That show Anne Hathaway's in right now. It's public theater. Little the plug there. Anyway. <laughs> it's good, it's good, by the way. The other question I have is, is about research. Research. So anyway, so that's, so that, so, that, that, so so bullet points, about outline bullet points, you can use cards, you can use index cards, okay, if you want. Okay, good. Now, next question. Yeah. So research, yes. you know, this, the play takes place over a period of time uh -huh. that is, say, from the early 60s to maybe the mid-70s. Right. So I, one of the characters is... Uh, Sing songs right. of the time. Right. So I was doing some research of the songs, and my and I, I wanted to have like songs of the fifties and sixties right. that weren't like hits, but songs right. that would, you know. Right. And there was a song called Hand Jive, uh -huh. you know, which was a very popular. Song. Okay. So I I looked it up. Right. And. The information was about hand jive, who it was written by, what it was done, and where it hit on the billboard chart. And then it said it was very controversial because uh, the song, uh, it, it, 
it was uh, controversial at one point because people thought it, it was about masturbation. Okay. Now, that's a lot of research. I mean, that's Wikipedia, right? Right. right. But that kind of information um, is something that's research that somebody would do today. But at that time, um, I don't need all that information. Do you understand what I'm saying? It depends what you're doing. It depends on the story. You know, if the person was a, uh, again, so, so Lynn is talking about all the, the research that she's doing for her project. It's set in the 60s and the 70s. She wants to include some of the music that was specific to that time. And she looked up a song and she got a whole bunch of information, which might not be uh, useful. But it might be, depending on the character you're, you're writing. You know, and if you just want a song or some lyrics from a song, you know, that's one thing. And if you just want, if, if you want something more detailed like that, like oh, it's a controversial thing, it's, you know, then then that would. Sure, it depends on what you want. It depends on where you're going. You see what I mean? I mean, you don't even, if you want songs from that era, you don't even have to really do any research. You know, I mean, you know, you, you know, I mean, so there's a there's a whole spectrum. You can do research a lot or none. Good, but I'm so outline bullet points. Okay, bullet points outline. Right. You're, you're, you're talking about I your computer, baby. I don't know. It's that air, it's that air book. It's a yeah, it's, a, it's copying. It's it's a, someone's calling you, I think, on your watch. Oh, you have a watch. So you have a yeah, somebody gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> somebody gave it to me. They did, they did. It's very nice. Yes. Um, on the, on the research, just yeah, a question. Yeah, sure. when, um, so when does it apply when you need to have as much research as possible? Yeah. Well, what, for, for example, if I just need a song from the 60s, right? Um, then I could just look up look up minor hits from the 60s. Boom, there's a list. I don't have to click on any one of them. I just, oh, I don't know any songs from the 60s, but whatever, blah, blah. We just don't need a character passing by the park singing a song. We have a kid who knows you put your chapter verse the song after hearing only two notes. Yeah. So you need he can quote the character can quote chapter and verse, meaning recording artist, blah 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 of a song after hearing only two notes. What do I need? I don't need just the lyrics of the song, right, Crystal? What do I need? I need who recorded it, when. Who, were, who was the drummer on the song, whatever, who played lead guitar, whatever. That's a lot of information. That's research, specific to the character. If I just needed some lyrics from a character strolling by in a park, it's very little research. You understand? So I'm not just doing research for the sake of doing research. I'm doing it to provide the character with some specifics for a dialogue or a character development. Does that make sense? It's, it's not Christmas. <laughs> 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 it is you just say it. <laughs> um, so, um, I guess. From at telling our stories. At telling, okay. Mm -hmm. She says, my new play I'm working is an adaptation from a collection of short memoirs that I edited. I've studied Anna DeVere Smith's work as a guide to work with these personal narratives. I wonder about the structure and dramatic arc with creating tension in the stage play adaptation. Uh, so, so, I'm sorry, let me get that again. So you are working on, on working at an adaptation of collection for memoirs that I edited, okay? And you're going to do them can we say like Anna did her, like Anna does her stage work? Is that kind of my interpreting? Am I getting this right? And you wonder how to create tension in the stage play adaptation. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I mean, not, I, 
I'm, and I'm going to, so to answer that question, I'm going to pretend I'm Anna DeVere Smith. <laughs> no, um, no, but I, I, think, um, I think the answer might be the, the same way you create tension in any story, right? You're going to feel the, the groove of the story or stories, since it sounds like it's a collection of many different people talking about, well, is this something working? Or, Oh, it didn't say. Okay. Um, many different people telling the stories from the book of their lives, okay? And you want to find common threads. And uh, so the audience is going to be leaning in, wondering, wow, wow, what happens next? What happens next? Things will accumulate. Um, if, I mean, you know Anna DeVere Smith, there's a, there's a, yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's a simple question to answer and a strange question to answer. Um, the same way you create dramatic tension in anything, it's not different just because you're doing a series of monologues. It is not different. Um, <clears throat> you want the monologues to accumulate, you want the story to build, you want, if you want an intermission, you want, um, also like Danny Hawk does this very well. I mean, there's so many people now who do this uh, one person show uh, brilliantly. And this is the Danny Hawk. Many and uh, limit. Um, I can't remember the name of the show that was here a little a few years ago. Lemon that had a beautiful uh, one man show. Um, you want the story to accumulate, even if it's not your story. You want the narrative to accumulate, and that's basically it. And you can learn that from anything you can read and reread Anna's work, Lemon's work, Danny Hawk's work, also um, any well written play. It's going to teach you how to just make the story um, accumulate. I keep using that word. That might not be specific enough, but maybe it'll show up next week and say, Hey, it was me! <laughs> this is what I really meant. Uh, and you can also put this back with more specifics if that was not helpful enough. But thank you for coming. Yes, sir. The comment goes up. Like piggybacking off of that, and my experience like with the bullet points is yeah. that I'm, I even I saw my therapist today. And she said you sound a little manic, and I was like, hey, you're telling me, girl, I'm I'm like, oh, I'm a little ungrounded, but I feel yes. like with the bullet points, I'm still having a hard time like like coloring in between the lines, like I'm still bleeding into other bullet points, but I keep revisiting them, and I'm just sort of like vomiting out the story, and I know. And I now, like you said it, you know, I know the story. Right. I keep looking at those bullet points, even though I'm not like hitting them. Right. I'm following, I'm letting the story accumulate, or right. trying to, and then I think once I just feel like I've gotten it all out, to, and looking at those bullet points, and then to print out the content, I think it'll help me fill in the gaps, or take away what's not needed. Right. Or I feel like, I mean, I, it's kind of like a shitty, yeah, thing to say. Like, I, like you gave me the advice and I'm really, really trying to go with the bullet points but I'm still feeling so I can't play, I can't stay within one bullet point but I know okay. it's within the story right. and so I'm sort of trusting that right. that well you're using many you're using many bullet points right yes. Brian's finding that the bullet points is like I can't quite get one thing per bullet point yeah. that's okay you can make two or three or four you can yeah. do that but, uh, but the look on the page are bullet points do you, you understand why? It's not a paragraph. Yeah. It's the, it is a one line. You can even number them. One, two, three, four. I recently turned in an outline for something I'm working on. The, the scenes were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know if that's how it's going to be in the end, but yeah. it just easy reference. And think of, if you can, close your eyes, open, open your eyes, boom. The biggest thing that happens on stage in that scene, right? Can I do it? I mean, that, 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 this, just do it once, so, and I can imagine doing that. The biggest thing that happens on stage right now. The biggest thing that happens on stage. That's what the bullet point is. You know, like for public and so forth, he leaves. He's in the war. He comes home. That's the, that would be parts one, two, three. Okay. <laughs> All the other stuff that happens. Yeah, I know you laugh. There's so much more that happens. Right, right, right. Of course. You know, and then, but in that, so those are the bullet points for the plays. For the individual, I mean, boom, boom, boom. Then for the play, it would have a series of bullet points. A 
see what I'm okay. saying? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I broke it up. The way I was using bullet points, I wasn't using, I wasn't, I wasn't approaching, I was just approaching like the sections of time. Not, not like the act, not like the actions of the time. So okay. I was approaching like college, like hospital, like, oh, like I wasn't, actions. like yeah. I, I was, I think maybe I needed to be a little more specific, but also a little, but also a little vague. <laughs> specific of the action, but not like, like your day today. You, you, you woke up, you got, you put your feet on the floor, mm -hmm. you stood up, oh, you're back up, or whatever, you know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, no, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> you know, you know, I'll play more, I don't know, but, but you know, right, yeah. you think you're young, know, whatever, yeah. and then, you know, you drink your juice, mm -hmm. and then you go out the door, mm -hmm. those are your bullet points for the morning, mm -hmm. see, oh, it's the morning. Okay. You see what I mean? It's yes. very specific. Again, think of stones crossing the river. This happens. And this has stones, like those round stones. They're, those are like your bullet points on the page. The water is rushing. There's a lot going on. There's fish. There are octopus. Octopi. What are they called? Whales. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> and then under those. Would you say like would you say those bullet points would be the big bullet point would be like my morning and then those would be the bullet points in my morning and then I would if I have stuff to elaborate <laughs> under those bullet points to elaborate under those bullet points? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so I would break it down. Mm -hmm. Like morning, noon, night. No, no, like 2014. Break it down. Spring, summer, winter, fall, break it down. January, February, March, April, break it down. January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd. So now we're zooming in. But the first of all, I want you just big ones. You see? I think, that's, I, think that, I think I was using big ones. Okay. And then I, was, I didn't get specific under them. So that's why I think everything was bleeding. Okay, so you can get specific cool. under them now. And it's okay, you can have as many as you want. You're not allowed to have only like seven. You know what I mean? No, you're allowed to have as many as you want. But I just want you to the shape of them so that we're not writing long paragraphs. You're trying to keep the language tight and contained as if they were on a flash button. Yeah. Okay, if you want to get to that eventually, you know? Okay, but does that make sense? No, yeah, I, I, I mean in the language or like how I'm writing it. I actually, I feel like unintentionally I can like associate it to like Venus. Like great, that, great. Like that. Yes, yeah, I like Venus. That's how I, that's how I put it. I mean, eventually. Yeah. This happened, then 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 this happened. The scenes are even numbered. They're even numbered, you know? Yeah, they're kind of. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I, I mean, that's the way, part of how I would work on it. Sure. I work on a lot of things that way. And then, sure, and then, and then in each scene, there are 20 million things that happen. <laughs> he does this, he lifts the gun, he picks up the cup, then he throws the cup in the fireplace, then, you know, the Santa Claus comes in and says, yo, what the fuck? And then, you know, whatever. Right? Yeah. Okay, good. Cool. Cool. Justin. Uh, oh. I have a suggestion okay. that you can either do or not, if it's attractive to you. <laughs> uh, I hate outlining. It's, I'm just not very good at it. Uh, so what I eventually figured out to do that seems to appeal to me more than doing bullet points on a page is that I would do it with post-it notes on a wall. So I would sort of make, like, and they have to be, I, I'm only allowed to do them in Sharpie because I have to be concise about it. Otherwise I go into tons of detail that I don't really need. And I write one event on a post-it note. It can be a scene. It can be a thing that I know has to happen, but I don't know how to write it yet. It could be a thing that I want to have happen, but it's not necessarily an it just, just like a series of events. And I arrange them in a line on the wall, and then that's great, because if you want to reorder things, you can just do it, and you can see it on your wall like that. And then if you want to get specific under one post-it note, then you can put another one and another one and another one with details. Like, you could have a thing that says, morning routine. That's like the big one at the top. And then you could have things like, Wake up, put feet on the floor, back hurts, make coffee, spill cream, and you could list it all under the big heading one. 
and then it doesn't feel quite as though each of the bullet points is taking up enough space to be no longer a valid bullet point. And then you can also come up with ideas, and if you don't know where to put them, you can just stick them anywhere. You can color code it, you can do things with it, you can take pictures of it so that you can rearrange it and not lose anything, because we've all, all got phones now. Uh, and also, if you decide you don't want to do something, the feeling of taking a post-it note off the wall and crumpling it and throwing it away is extremely satisfying. So, yeah. This is brilliant. For some reason, though, we suggested uh, cards to Ryan, but he's not going to cards. So I don't know what. I don't know what uh, he might not like paper. I, or he might have not gotten the staples or something. I'm not sure. Maybe you like the sticky post it notes. Well, it seems, it's really, it okay. seems like a marrying of the index. And the, yeah. Go for it. Any, but whatever. You need yeah. space and all those kinds of things. I don't know what your space situation is like. But that's a wonderful idea. Cool. Yeah, it's like, It sounds nice, it does. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, cool. You can see the fire or you can not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just calm. But, just, but, but do something, right? Do something and, and continue. And yeah, that's great. More, more. Cool. And the tricky thing, outlining, you see, we say, you see, you don't like outlining the hand Let us reframe those things that we say those things about. Because actually, you just explained, um, a method of outlining that sounds like you're very good at it. Yeah. Um, outlining is a bad rap, I don't know why. I'm not sure why. And it's very effective. Whether you put pieces of paper on the wall, or put, put pens in a bulletin board, or post-it notes, or index cards that you carry around your hand and put in your pocket on the subway, or bullet points if you don't want to write things down on paper. Um, outlining is very helpful. If you find that you're needing some kind of structure that it's very helpful. So, I mean, you know, the yellow brick road was an outline. Follow the yellow brick road. That's an outline we're talking about. Right? There it is. Good time. Right, anybody else have a burning question that they'll be really sad if we don't get to? Okay, a really quick one. Um, yes, yeah, so yeah. if, if you know how you want to begin and how you want to end, how much do you have to give in, or what is the compromise between the story about yourself to the end, or having your end be the way it is? Like, yes, sure if, you, if, you, if you know how you want to begin, and if you know how you want to end, what is your question? What if when you're writing, as you're writing, it's, it's, it's hard to get there, or it doesn't, it, it's, it, there's another road that you're not, you don't want. Is that? Yes, yes. It seems it, like it's gelling in a different way. Right, right, so you know how you want to begin, you know how you want to end, and you start out on your yellow brick road, and you find that you're not going to Oz after all, you're going to Saskatchewan, and you're like, WTF, I want to go to Oz. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes you have to just go to Saskatchewan, because that's where the characters take you. Sometimes you have to figure out, I really want to go to Oz, this is really important to me, how do I get to Oz? And that's Dorothy's whole thing, how do I get to Kansas? So, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So you have to try to become Dorothy. We'll talk about it more. Okay. Okay. And so maybe we will do next week and the next week and then take a hiatus starting Memorial Day. Better for people? Yes. Next week we'll take a hiatus and then we come back for the summer. Yes, let's put some little hiatuses in there as I jet around the universe. Oh, yeah, you're jetting around the universe. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah.